Asiai is trying so hard. So did you guys see that? That was Asiai flirting with his lovely mate Persimmon. And he was bouncing so hard he was shaking the whole food container. You two just need to hang in there a little bit longer and I'll be able to get you guys moved into your breeder cage. He is so ready to have a new little clutch of babies with his beautiful woman. Were you going to bathe Persimmon? No? Alright. Well, I'm glad you guys are feeling so amorous. There might be baby birds soon. Hi, sweetie. Oh, he woke up. He noticed we came over. I, w I wonder, like, she must be sitting on eggs because she's so firm about not moving. And I was thinking today, what happens with their ducklings? Like, do they... they don't have Good point. What happens with your goslings? <laughs> like, the goslings can't get out of this area until they can fly. Right. So do they just have to stay in here until they can fly? Probably. Huh. Well, it's a safe community, I guess. As long as they don't fall down those, like, holes over there. I hope that doesn't happen. Take care of your babies. Oh, she doesn't like us. Dad did already go back to sleep. That is one happy kitty cat. It's sound asleep. Its paws are just pressed up against the window. That's the cutest thing. And it's, it's a happy kitty and it's in the sun. Today has been a good day for storytelling and I am very excited that I am feeling well enough though you can probably still hear that I'm not like feeling my best and I had a little bit of a fever earlier today so ignoring all of that today has been a good day for storytelling and I'm finally getting back on track with a few of the series that we've got that require like a lot of story work in there um, like zoo crafting actually has a lot of behind the scenes story and a lot of ways where I try to like add in extra straples so they can feel really interactive with the community and then warriors take a long time to make because I have to like think through all the plots, run the random generators, which are really fun, and then kind of like look at how the role playing needs to be written out and then record it, and then the cats never do what they're supposed to while I'm recording it. But I finally managed to get everything on track, and for the first time, I actually have like zoo crafting and warrior cats back out on the same day when I wanted them out. Uh, so I'm really happy about that, and I'm going to be working hard tonight to do some special time lapses for tomorrow zoo crafting. So fingers crossed that can get done because that's. It's like Saturday, which is normally the Saturday special, which is almost an hour long. So I'm going to have to see if I can actually make it an hour long because I'm going to start working on the draft exhibit and the 100th episode of season three of Zoo Crafting is coming up soon. And all of those little milestones are actually how I keep myself very motivated and also very busy. So see this? This, my friends, right here, this chaos of papers and random things and notes and like random generators scribbled down. This is how I keep myself organized with all of the different projects that we have and it's just really fun for me to be able to have like goals like all right it's almost the 100th episode of zoo crafting boom 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 or like yeah we're almost up to episode 50 of warrior cats and warrior cats is really surprising me i love writing that i'm actually reading let's see what book am i on i don't even remember what book i'm on right now so let me check my little fancy Kindle. I say fancy Kindle, but it's actually so old that Chips was like gonna throw it out. And I was like, are you kidding? That's a Kindle. So this is my first Kindle. It was a gift from him. Omen of the Stars, number six. I don't know if there's anything after that. I will be a little bit sad if there's nothing after this. It's the extended version. So I'm gonna be a little sad if I finish that because I've been reading Warriors like nonstop for the last couple months. But if I do, that's okay. I'll just have to write more of my own stories. So that'll be interesting. And if you guys have any book recommendations for when uh, Chips and I go off on our little vacation next month. We're actually going on two little mini vacations. One's not so many. It's like a week long on an island, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> I'm still sort of like flabbergasted that that's actually going to be happening in large part thanks to his, like entirely thanks to his family, um, which is kind of amazing. But yeah, if you have book recommendations, then uh, I'm more than open to them. I love fantasy, especially, especially fantasy that doesn't fall into like the really awful cliches. So I'm very open to any book recommendations that might be out there. Um, and I might even try reading Seekers, which is still that kind of child to teenage 
um, literature level, but apparently it's about dogs, and it's kind of like war cats, but with dogs. So I basically look anywhere I can for inspiration on stories to write for you guys. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, it's been a great morning. It's been a great morning for getting those straw polls and putting together the stories and getting them going up on the channel, and it's really fun. And I kind of want to take you guys out on a short little walk down to the lake. I'm not feeling my best for a full like mile. It's like two mile loop around the lake, but I am feeling like it would be really fun to go and like go see what we can find. So we'll go down there in just a second together. I'm trying to think, is there anything else, Brutos? They're all quiet because they're, I've accidentally broke their bath and now I have to put it on the bottom of their cage. So by moving the bath from the middle of the cage to the bottom of the cage, I have now transformed it. And it's a new thing that we have to be concerned about and then decide if we're afraid of it because that's how birds work. So they'll get used to it. But everybody's just like silently staring at it because it moved position, so it could be a new danger. Uh, my birds are so silly. But yeah, let me think. Big milestones coming up that I'm super excited about. 100th episode of Zoo Crafting Season 3, so we're moving into like 800 plus, almost 900 total episodes of Zoo Crafting, which is sort of amazing. Um, Warriors is going good. Wolf Quest is back, and I'm, I'm going to see if I can keep it back. It's kind of hard for me to keep playing because it's the same two levels over and over again, but it has a tremendously loyal following, and I really like seeing the creativity that it spawns, especially among the younger viewers, especially among the older viewers, because I have, I have Katie's beautiful painting that she made for me of Wolf Quest, and actually I have Riona's um, beautiful Wolf Quest like family tree. I actually want to get it printed out so I can put it on my office wall when we move. So yeah, it inspires creativity in our viewers and that means a lot to me. Even if sometimes you're like, this is the same two levels over and over again. I don't know about this, but it's okay. But yeah, so let me think. Um, I feel like I had something really fun and story oriented to tell you guys about what's going on on the channel. But if I can't remember it, then maybe it's a secret. So I'm going to keep it a secret. And let's go see what we can find on our walk. I just remembered what I was going to say that was really fun and story oriented. I've just started watching a race to the anime today uh, because I'm really in the market for some good animes. I love Mushishi. I have very little time to relax with animes because normally I'm working from moment I wake up to like moment I go to sleep, but I'm trying to make myself take more breaks. So uh, yeah, if you guys have any recommendations for those as well, I'm really open. I've seen like Beautiful Bones, which is amazing. That's kind of my tier. Mushishi, Beautiful Bones, that's kind of like my preference for animes um and yeah erased saw the first episode today i was really impressed and i'm really hoping i'm going to enjoy it so it's really good if you guys like that kind of stuff and definitely maybe for the older audience so just keep that in mind oh yeah do you guys see that we have lots of snake action on the rocks today so you can see these are two varieties of northern water snake they just have slight color variation and you can see a redder one right up here looking super duper awesome. And then you can see a darker one right here. That one looks really full. That must have eaten something recently. And what these guys eat, their diet is almost entirely going to be like fish. And there's lots and lots of little fish. In fact, normally if you look over into the stream, you can see a little fish over here pretty much at any time. But I am totally in love with these guys, and in a special video that I hope to have up tomorrow on the main channel for Specimen Saturday, we actually were over here looking at, I believe it was this one right here, because you can start telling the difference in their colors, and admiring him here on the, um, here on the bridge, because I'm on the little bridge right now. See, little bridge, there's my feet. But we were admiring him, and one of the park workers came over because he just was happening to walk by, and he mentioned the whole reason that they made this fencing that they have on both sides is to protect these little guys because people wanted to walk down in the rocks and like play in them, and there's lots and lots of northern water snakes, and people were like, "Oh no, water moccasin, kill, kill!" And these guys are harmless, and they just want to like sit around and eat frogs and fish. So they went ahead. Oh, there's a third one. Oh, you guys, do you see the third one? Yes, three water snakes. It's a three water snake day. I'm going to have to look really carefully and see if I can find more. But they went ahead and built the fence to protect the northern water snakes so people wouldn't mess with them. Because they will bite if you try to hold them. They're not docile the way that like a lot of black rat snakes and other snakes will be. And really, that's totally understandable because if somebody comes along and picks you up, that's kind of rude. And I would give them a good bite if I could too. And especially if I was a little snake and I don't have any arms or anything. Man, these guys look well fed. Look at the head of that little guy. He's just peeking out. 
there must be so many. But yeah, the park worker that I actually got him on camera. I'm not sure if he's going to show up in the final clip. If not, I might add it as a little like bonus extra uh, here on the vlog channel. Oh, look at you move your little head. You're so cute. But he mentioned how if we come back in about like, now it'd be like 28 days, so about a month, then this entire area is going to be full. He's like, there's 30 at a time when you come over here then, because they're just having fun and basking in the rocks and kind of meeting up for the summer. So they're very, very, very beautiful. I really love them. Yeah, there's actually a third one right down here. He's sticking his head right out from the rocks next to this guy right there. Just the very edge of his head. He's really, really dark. Yeah, yeah I love watching these got guys. I have seen a couple small ones. <laughs> one of the park workers told me if I come back in about a month, then there should be like 30 of them all over the place because oh, that's when they show up. I'm real excited. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Man, they're so cute. I love them. But yeah, we'll look forward to that. So in about another month, we'll be able to see if we can find these guys coming out in mass. So there you go. I'm going to have to tell Chips like he missed out because it's a triple snake walk day. How awesome is that?